Hey guys, my name is Lucas Wetzel, and I'm a book editor at a company in Kansas City, Missouri called Andrews McMeal Publishing. And I'd like to talk with you a bit today about drawing comics and graphic novels and using art and language to kind of create your own comics and tell your own stories. So when I was a kid growing up actually in Kansas City, where this company is, I read a lot of comics like Calvin and Hobbes and The Far Side, and I started drawing cartoons of drawing pictures of my classmates, of my teachers, the lunch ladies, the bus driver, and just kind of doing little stories and jokes that would make people laugh and drawing funny characters. And I thought I'd grow up and be a published cartoonist or author, but instead I wound up working many years later as a editor. So what that means is that I work with different artists and authors and cartoonists to help them kind of come up with book ideas and tell stories and have a good book design and kind of make sure they're spelling stuff right and turning things in so it's a little bit like your teachers at school maybe when they edit or mark up your papers and, and show you spelling mistakes and stuff. And I just kind of try to provide advice and encouragement uh, for the authors and I work with a team of people in design and production to make sure the books all get printed on time and sent out to bookstores and libraries and eventually make their way into your hands. So I'd like to talk about a few of the books I work on and a few of the authors and the things that I think they do really well and see what we can learn from each of those different artists and cartoonists. So I'll start with uh, with Big Nate. Uh, Big Nate is a, a really mischievous sixth grade boy. He gets in a lot of trouble and it's always fun to see what kind of trouble he gets into. He has a lot of big ideas and he thinks a lot of uh, things that he does are really great, but his, his friends are... They genuinely like him a lot, but they also kind of make fun of, of the stuff that he does. So Big Nate, I think, is really great in that it's it's funny. Uh, Lincoln Purse started drawing those comics um, based on his own school experiences, kind of to make people laugh. And the characters are really recognizable, and they're a lot of fun. And then another book uh, series is Phoebe and Her Unicorn by Dana Simpson. So what I love about Phoebe and Her Unicorn is about... It's about friendship, and there's also a lot of magic thrown in. Um, and it's really, even though there's a lot of magical stories, I mean, the best, the two main characters are a best friend, a set of best friends, a unicorn and a little girl named Phoebe. It's a lot about problems that you and I might face, or things you might face in school, or fighting with your parents, or things like that. Um, they just have really creative solutions to those problems, like if Phoebe uh, doesn't want to do swimming, uh, swimming class, uh, Marigold the Unicorn will put a kickboard spell and to make her be able to use the kickboard super fast. So it's very imaginative and, and fun and sweet. And there's a lot of heart in that comic strip. And then Wallace the Brave by Will Henry is kind of based on where he lives in Rhode Island along the coast and along the ocean. And it's all about these kids who use their imagination to make the world extraordinary. So they might go looking for sea monsters in a lost cave or looking for lost treasure. And they kind of take their everyday world around them and turn it into something really interesting and imaginative. And it's really beautiful artwork as well. Um, Will does everything in watercolor and ink. And um, it's pretty fascinating to see his process as well. And let's see, another book series I just love is Breaking Cat News by Georgia Dunn. And that is really about a group of cats who live in a house and they think that they're news reporters. And there's a lot of great observational humor. They're, the cats are joking and, and reporting about the things that they see around them. Um, so the laundry chute uh, is actually a magical slide in an amusement park for them. And there's just a lot of silliness there and a lot of humor. So I think what I love about Breaking Cat News is also the artwork and the storytelling, but also the silliness and humor of the cats doing mischievous things. So in writing your own comics, um, there's some things to keep in mind. Your characters, and that's kind of who is the star of the strip and who the secondary characters are. So I think it's helpful to make a list of different character traits. And uh, so you kind of get to know, the reader gets to know that character a little bit over time. The character could be based on you or it could be somebody totally different than you, but they have to kind of have a well-defined set of characteristics so you kind of, the reader gets to know who they are. And the setting is kind of what is around you and where the comic strip or the graphic novel or story takes place. It could be your hometown. It could be something totally different, a place you visited one time and want to know more about. But just like the characters kind of get established and the reader gets to know them, 
the reader also gets to know the setting as well. Uh, for Big Nate, it's the school most of the time, uh, or the softball field. Breaking Cat News, it really all takes place in the house. And uh, so every comic has its own kind of unique setting. And then conflict is, you might have learned about that in storytelling in, in English class and writing class in school. It's where there's some kind of a problem between uh, either it's internal conflict for the character, something they're afraid of, or it's an external conflict, like some kind of problem they're having in the world. And as the character overcomes that conflict, they learn something about themselves, and the reader kind of learns something as well. So, some thoughts you might have in mind when you're writing comics and with what's important. Um, I would say tell stories that are interesting to you, and things that make you laugh. If you can make somebody laugh, that's a really powerful thing. And if it makes something that makes you laugh, there's a good chance it'll make your friends laugh or even somebody in a different part of the world. That's what's so cool about for these authors is they are reaching, reaching people all over the place with their comics. And just practice drawing all the time and practice writing. Writing is actually even maybe more important a skill to develop because you can have a comic with just stick figures in it and you would still get the jokes and the humor across. But writing, writing and art is something that all of these authors practiced over time and that you can get better at the more you do it. Um, Big Nate looks a lot different now than he did when Lincoln first started drawing comics 30 years ago. Dana Simpson did Phoebe the Unicorn for about 10 years in some form before it launched in newspapers and in books. So it does take time and it, you keep getting better at it. It's like building a muscle kind of. And also keep reading comics. Um, there's so many great comics out there and as you see how other people tell their stories that'll give you inspiration to tell your own. And then one thing I like to keep in mind, too, is uh, the power of imagination and observation. So observation is really just looking at what's around you, and imagination is making stories and jokes uh, out of those things that you observe in the world. Um, and that's really important because, you know, not everybody's going to be a published author or cartoonist, but when you practice those powers of observation and imagination and artwork and writing, you start to see the world uh, a little bit more detail and a little bit more fun. It helps you communicate with other people. It helps you kind of get in touch with your own ideas and feelings and experiences. And it's just a really fun process. So I hope you're able to have fun drawing and writing your own comics and graphic novels. And best of luck to you. Thanks for spending this time with me today.